She's not even moving. It always amazed me how she could just get all that out and you'd never even know there was any effort put into it. It was just so natural for her. Singing may have come naturally to Tammy, but being alone did not. Within a year of her divorce from Michael Tomlin, Tammy was being romanced by an old acquaintance. George Ritchie, a producer and songwriter who'd had a professional association with Tammy for years, was interested in taking their friendship to another level. We started talking about getting married. And she asked me if I would Actually, will you quit what you're doing and take over my career? That, in essence, was the question. I realized uh, pretty soon into the relationship that I liked him more than uh, I probably should have at the time because I was just jumping from uh, frying pan into the fire. So I remember her coming and telling us, and in a way, I think I was relieved, and I thought, well, if this is the one that's going to make you happy, then... Yeah, that's great. Tammy and George Ritchie were married on July 6, 1978. The union began with high hopes, but the honeymoon was short-lived. On October 4, 1978, less than four months after the wedding, Tammy told the press a bizarre story. She claimed to have been kidnapped from the parking lot of an Asheville mall, transported 80 miles south to Pulaski, Tennessee, then beaten and left in a farmer's field. He took the gun in his left hand, opened the door, and pulled me out from uh, the other side of the car and we were in the middle of nowhere and it, you know I just thought well you know this is it. There were people looking at the, the pictures of her in, in the Tennessee and in the banner and saying why does she have that spot of shoe polish on her cheek is that a bruise or is that shoe polish? It's all so bizarre why would you transport Tammy Wynette from point A to point B and either not rob her or 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 harm her in any way. Once again, as was the case of the mysterious break-ins and fires of 1976, after a protracted police and FBI investigation, no arrests were ever made. After the Fuhrer died down, Tammy's daughter Jackie said her mother admitted to her that the whole incident had been a hoax.